Good morning everyone from beautiful North Florida where it is notably more green than it is back home. It is definitely a lot warmer down here and a lot happier looking so we're gonna spend the next two days walking around in the forest just trying to turn up some snakes. The big target species for today are blue striped ribbon snakes, king snakes, and diamondbacks so any of those three things pop up I'll be a very happy man and honestly I'll just be happy to see some snakes so we're gonna go get to walking around and I will let you guys know how it goes. First turp of the day, little ground skink. Whoop, there he goes. Well, Caitlin just spotted our first snake of the trip. We've been at it for maybe an hour at this point, but there's a nice southern black racer right here, just chilling on the side of the trail. Don't know if he's gonna let us get too close to him, but it is pretty cool out here. Um, it's supposed to get up to around 70, maybe even as warm as like 72 today, so. Feels really good, and hopefully this will not be the only thing we see, but nice looking black racer. All right, I just saw our second racer of the day go under this. We're gonna see if he's under there. I mean, he's gotta be under this one. You see him? Did you see him? Oh, he's right here. Check this out. This is a Titanic king snake shed. <laughs> Pretty fresh too. Well, it's kind of encouraging that that shed was fresh. Um, king snake sheds tend to not last super long, so it's likely that was shed in the last week or two. But look at this guy. This is a very striking brown anole. These guys are invasive, but they are here to stay, and they're food for a lot of our native snakes and other herps, so it's not really the worst invasive species, but at the same time, they do compete with the native green anoles, and it seems like they outcompete them most of the time, which is definitely a bummer, but really good looking lizard. It's around noon at this point, maybe like 11.30, so we've still got quite a bit of day ahead of us, but I think we're kind of in the prime time now, so we're gonna try to keep moving, and hopefully there will be a snake out. Still have only seen the two racers so far, maybe three. Caitlin thinks she saw one uh, like run out the back when I flipped the palm front that had that other one under it, so. This is pretty cool. I've been seeing a ton of these today, but this is the first one that has actually sat for a second. I do believe that is a monarch. Look at that. It's a beautiful gray rat snake right there. Look at him. It took long enough for us to find something that wasn't a racer. This guy's pretty big. You can see his tail back there. Stretches all around. And that is a fantastic snake though. Oh, relax dude. That is insane. What a good looking snake. That is stunning. What a great looking small adult gray rat snake. Crazy how different they are here than back home. That is so crazy looking. That pretty much makes the day for me if we don't see anything else. He is not super cooperative, but he is very gentle. Hasn't tried to bite at all. Very nice. And literally like right beside where the rat snake was. I believe that is our fourth racer of the day. He sees me already. But uh, Caitlin saw one that I didn't see. And then we had the one or maybe two that were together. Sushi break. <laughs> we kind of went in, we're starving. So we're gonna eat real quick and then we're gonna go look for salamanders. All right, everyone. So this was really the main thing I was looking forward to doing today. Um, we're gonna be targeting a really cool little salamander I have never seen before with some really cool potential bycatch. And that salamander is the one-toed Amphiuma, the rarest member of the Amphiuma group and a salamander that I've only really tried to look for once. So we've got this really beautiful upland habitat here 
really sandy soil. And then there's a big drop off right there where the road drops off into a floodplain. So down in that floodplain, there's a lot of seepages and a lot of great salamander habitat. So we're gonna walk down there and see what we can get into. this tree. It's ridiculous. So we have a slight issue in that the water we're supposed to be dip netting is non-existent because it's so dry here. But nevertheless, there is a little bit of water and there's definitely some moisture under the logs. And right here, we have our first salamander, a nice three-lined salamander. This is something we see at home pretty often, so not a big deal, but it is the first thing we have seen out here, so I figured I would show it. These guys are probably going to be pretty common here if we can get into some habitat that isn't dry or destroyed by hogs. But yeah, this evening might end up kind of being a bust unless we can find some habitat because this place is pretty torn up and is dry. Next log over and another three line. And here's our next species for the day. This is a coastal plains dwarf salamander. And this is actually a dwarf salamander we have not seen a lot of on the channel. They're very small, just like the Hillises and Chamberlain's dwarf salamanders we've seen recently. But they are restricted to the lower coastal plain. They might get into South Carolina and stuff too. I'm not sure exactly what their range is, but really we tend to see these guys in South Georgia and Florida. But I don't think I've ever shown one on the channel, and if I have, it has only been a couple, so kind of cool. They're not nearly as colorful as our dwarf salamanders in Georgia, but still really neat little Eurycia. This one's a male. You can see his Siri. Very nice. We'll put him back. We've actually found a little bit of water here, so I'm going to flip these logs and check the muck underneath them really good, and hopefully we'll turn up our target. All right, here's our second salamander in this tiny little wet area. This is a, I believe these are central newts here. I don't think we're far enough east for peninsula newts, but very dull compared to our eastern newts that we get in Georgia. Still a really cool looking and unique salamander, but it seems like the salamanders are pretty confined to these moist areas. And I can't tell if this guy is just in like a weird in-between transitional stage between an eft and an uh, aquatic adult, but he does look really weird, potentially even a little bit skinny. But flipping in these wet areas has produced a few salamanders so far, so we're going to stick with it a bit, I think, and hopefully we'll turn something up. Here's another little dwarf salamander. This guy's got a complete tail. That is about as big as those guys get. Really, really small. They're called dwarf salamanders for a good reason. And here's yet another species. This is Desmognathus apalachicole, the apalachicola dusky salamander. Pretty nondescript, but they are a different Desmog than the ones we find closer to home, which are Conanti. But these guys were pretty common at this spot the first time I came, and this is the first one we've seen. If that's any indication of just how dry it is, this is about the most water we've seen coming out of one of these seepage areas yet. So I'm just gonna let him go back under his log. And here's a bigger Apalachicole. That's about a full grown adult. Nice little stripe on the eye, but beyond that, pretty nondescript. All right, well, I wouldn't call that a failure, but it definitely was uh, not what I was hoping it would be, mostly due to the poor condition of the uh, site from the hogs and the fact that it's just super dry. But yeah, I think we're gonna start making our way back to the hotel. We might get out and hike around if we see some nice looking habitat. And it is fairly warm right now, so there could be some snakes on the road. But yeah, not really a clean up day, but it's definitely better than uh, the last couple outings that we've had in Georgia, which haven't even made it to YouTube because they've been that bad. So I will definitely take it. That gray wrap was definitely the highlight, but tomorrow is gonna be just as nice, maybe even a little bit warmer. So we're gonna get up in the morning, flip a little bit of tin, and maybe try to dip net some areas. Ooh, that's an osprey. I think that's a big bird. Look at that thing. Pretty sure that was an osprey. Could have been a vulture. I didn't get a great look at it, but yeah. I will let you guys know if we see anything else today, and if not, I will see y'all in the morning. All right, so it's super dry out here and I already flipped this so I know what's under it, but check this out. Ah, that is a two-toed amphiuma. 
Thank you everyone for watching. I just wanted to take a minute to remind you guys that I am teaming up with the Orient Society this year to raise some money for conservation of the Eastern Indigo Snake and a lot of the other iconic species that they work with. We are hosting a raffle in which there are a lot of really cool prizes, including prints of my photography and a field herping trip with myself to look for Eastern Indigo Snakes and uh, get hands-on experience with doing research with these animals. If this is the sort of thing that interests you, tickets are $10 each, and there are bundles available on the website that I will be linking in the description. So check it out, take a look at all the prizes, and I will see you guys in the next episode.